Who is Sigrid McCauley? She's a South Florida-based attorney with years of experience representing abuse victims. One of them, Virginia Jeffrey, the woman who sued Prince Andrew for sexual assault, a case which helped bring down Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell's sex trafficking ring. She is credited with helping to bring down billionaire Jeffrey Epstein, with implications reaching all the way to the royal family. South Florida attorney Sigrid McCauley is considered one of the most famed and formidable lawyers in the U.S. and a national leader in sexual abuse litigation. McCauley was at the center of one of the world's most high-profile legal battles where she represented victims of Epstein's sex trafficking ring, seeking justice for those victims. It's been a long time coming. One of those victims was Virginia Jones. Jeffrey. She was one of the first to come forward to accuse Epstein. Jeffrey, who was just a teenager at the time of the abuse, pursued criminal and civil actions against Epstein, Ghislaine Maxwell, and Prince Andrew. Epstein and Maxwell were found guilty and convicted, and Prince Andrew settled the sexual abuse lawsuit with Jeffrey. Ghislaine Maxwell has been convicted, is, is in prison. She'll be sentenced this summer, um, and there are other investigations still ongoing and things, so I do anticipate that there will still be more activity in those cases. McCauley, who worked free of charge for Epstein's accusers since 2015 and endured intimidation and threats throughout her defense, continues her pro bono work and is committed to stopping sexual predators. I had the chance to talk to Sigrid McCauley about her involvement in the Jeffrey Epstein case and what it took to bring him down and expose the abuse. Here's our conversation. Sigrid, thank you so much for joining us. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having a moment to talk about our foster children and protecting those kids from abuse and neglect. I'm just really thrilled to be here. We're going to talk about that. But we want to begin, of course, with the Jeffrey Epstein case. You have become somewhat of a legend, a living legend in the legal world for your work on this case. You were one of the attorneys that brought down Jeffrey Epstein, a feat that many thought was impossible. And you succeeded in that. And some of the ramifications of that have led all the way to the royal family. But let's begin at the beginning, so to speak, because you had just come back from maternity leave, your fourth child. You get back to work. They present you with this case, Virginia Jeffries. What was your initial reaction to that? I think, Jackie, I was able to handle the initial meeting with Virginia a little bit better just because of my background. I think that if I had been an attorney who had never been exposed to children in the system, in the foster care system, or children who were suffering from abuse issues, that would have been a really difficult meeting. But I was able to hear her, I think, in a way that um, was really special in that moment because I had heard stories similar to Virginia's in the past. And so I was, I would say, ready to listen in a way that I think maybe some other lawyers wouldn't have been prepared. So while it was incredibly difficult to meet with her and hear about that story, and as you've heard, it's a tragic story uh, filled with remarkable names and, and individuals involved and, and just atrocities that are unthinkable, I was able to understand it, I think, at a different level in that initial moment. Is that because of your charitable work before that? I would say yes, for sure. You know, I had had the gift of working uh, with the foster care system for many, many years prior to meeting Virginia, and it also worked with um, female survivors of abuse. So that all um, really laid a good groundwork for me, again, to hear that story, because I think if you came at that story without having any background, you might not be able to understand it in the way that I, I was able to, and to really hear her. And I will tell you from the moment I met her, I knew that she had to be protected. I mean, that was certain. And I think that my background in dealing with foster children and trying to protect our kids from abuse and neglect really did help me. Did you ever imagine what you were getting yourself into with this case? N not at all. Um, my daughter's turning uh, eight this summer, and I started it, as you said, when she came back from maternity leave. And I will say it was um, walking into that room, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I really had very little background on the Epstein saga, um, had read a little bit on the plane on the way up before m meeting with Virginia, and it was life-changing. I mean, really, in that moment, uh, there, I learned so many different things about the people involved. I learned so many different things about the, the, just the, the scandalous nature of what had gone on and the fact that this trafficking system had existed for over 20 years. It was so remarkable and uh, so hard to fathom that our system had allowed these children to be subjected to this abuse for so long. So I knew in that moment I had to do something about it. You said over 20 years this was going on. 
and yet he had been accused before and he pretty much got a slap on the wrist. What went wrong? That's really the tragedy of this story, I would say. You know, one of my clients, Maria Farmer, was the initial client to report back in 1996. And if her calls to the FBI and the police had just been heard, we could have stopped this predator. But instead, they went unheard. And for years and years and years, other individuals are subjected to horrific abuse. And even when the, that abuse came to light in Palm Beach, just in our neighborhood here, uh, when Many, many little girls came forward and explained how they had been victimized by Jeffrey Epstein. Still, he only got a slap on the wrist and was able to walk free for many, many years thereafter. It wasn't until 2019 when he's arrested in New York that we really stop him in his tracks. So you start uncovering the layers and the layers and the layers of this case. Did you think this was winnable for you as, as a case? I really, when I first um, got involved in it, my, my initial reaction was just to protect Virginia. She was being attacked by so many other individuals. And again, she was calling people out for significant abuse. So that was my initial reaction, was to find a way to protect her. And one of the ways we did that uh, was to go after Gillen Maxwell in a defamation case. And that was the initial case that we brought. And it was really a way to expose the abuse because uh, Virginia's statute of limitations, which is the time within which you can sue, had already run. So we brought that defamation case to be able to uncover all of the information, all of the things that had happened to her. So that was really a way to protect her, was to bring light to, to the trafficking. What about protecting you, yourself? Because I know there was a lot of intimidation from what I've read. There was some threats made against you. Did you ever feel in fear for your life? Did you ever think to yourself, I can't continue with this case? There were many times that I was afraid for myself, but more importantly, afraid for my children. I mean, as a mother, you can imagine that there are times when you question your choices. Am I doing the right thing here while I'm protecting other individuals who definitely need protection? Am I putting my family at risk? I mean, I was followed home from work. I had threats that came in, you know, a variety of things. People went after my bar license. Like, I was really challenged. There were many dark moments. Um, but I just knew that, again, we had to stand by these young girls. Somebody had to stand by them and I was fortunate enough to be at a wonderful firm where they were willing to invest millions of dollars in free legal work to allow our team to do this. So in the end, thankfully, everything worked out well. Free legal work. So you worked on this case for years and it was pro bono? We did pro bono work. The, the bulk of the time we um, have taken on many, many clients even before and after Virginia that we've done in this space. Um, most recently we're doing uh, a case on behalf of some ballerinas who've been victimized. Um, they were ballerinas, some of them with the Boston Ballet. So it, the work has been tremendous in this space and the pro bono commitment of the firm has been just astronomical. The Me Too movement, what kind of an impact did that have? That was really significant for us. I will tell you, Jackie, that prior to uh, the, the Me Too movement, we started the case in a really difficult space. The media was not friendly to my client, Virginia. They were calling her things like, um, you know, a bad mother, you know, a prostitute, words that just shouldn't be used against a victim of abuse. And we had to battle back from that. I mean, I remember having a number of, you know, yelling matches with journalists on the phone trying to get them to understand what had really happened here. And so that was a, a significant battle, but then when the Me Too movement came along, you saw all these very significant actresses coming out and speaking their truth. And I think that just helped the public realize that this can even happen to really, you know, significant people, really famous people. Abuse is, is not blind to those people either. And so it made people understand and listen to my clients in a way that they hadn't previously. Many consider you brilliant in the way that you were able to handle this case. And you mentioned statute of limitations. You were able to circumvent some of these laws in order to move this case forward. Well, we certainly tried to. I mean, again, you know, you're given lemons, you try to make lemonade. I don't think I did anything any different than a fine lawyer would do, but um, we certainly were fortunate enough to have a great group working on it. And um, to really, again, when you're, when you're faced with someone like Virginia and then the other survivors that I had the privilege of representing, you know, there was just no way not to do everything in our power to try to help them. So what was your ultimate goal and Virginia's ultimate goal with this? 
her ultimate goal when the very first time I sat, sat down with her was to put these people in prison. And I remember that conversation very significantly because I said, I'm not a criminal lawyer. I'm just a civil lawyer. I will do everything in my wheelhouse to help you and we'll see where it goes. And so, you know, to be at this point now where I got to make that call to her when Epstein was first arrested was just beyond anything I had ever experienced in my career. It was really, really just a, a very powerful moment. So Epstein was convicted, he's in jail, and then you get a call that he was found dead in prison, and it was deemed a suicide. Did you believe that? I have to say there's many schools of thought on the suicide. For me, I had interacted with uh, Jeffrey Epstein in um, depositions and other places, and he didn't strike me as the type of person that would take his own life, um, but I'm by no means a psychologist, so <laughs> I, I don't think we'll ever know. I mean, the circumstances surrounding his death were so unusual, um, having temp staff on, on site, having cameras not working. There were just a variety of uh, unusual circumstances that uh, led me to question what happened that night. It seems that you are now on the other side of this. So what's next for you? What is it that you you want to do and continue doing? Well, I certainly do my work for my commercial clients um, and represent big companies. Uh, that's typically what I do. But in my spare time, I still am doing a lot of work for the abuse victims. Um, I've gotten a number of calls from survivors, have all different kinds of circumstances. And so it's been a really pr a real privilege to get to um, interact with those survivors and see if there's ways that are can help them. When you look back at everything that you went through, and you have four kids, a wonderful family here, would you do anything differently? Would you do it all over again? I don't think I could not do it. <laughs> There's no way I could step back in time and say no to that. I don't think anybody could, frankly. Um, understanding Virginia's journey and what she went through and how horrific that abuse was, I couldn't walk away from that, even, even if it was said to me again tomorrow. So no, I wouldn't do anything differently. How is she doing today? She's great, she's great. Really in a wonderful place. Her charity is thriving. Uh, her focus is on helping other survivors. And uh, she has a group that she calls the Survivor Sisters, which is really special to see them all coming together out of that pain and really doing something uh, to, to change with that, with that situation. Speaking of doing something to change in that situation. You have done a lot of work with ChildNet and with foster kids. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I'll tell you, the work with ChildNet has been just such a gift in my life, but the really significant part of that is that we have over 1,800 kids in our care. We have 60 kids getting removed each month and put into foster care. We need to do a better job in general supporting ChildNet and supporting our foster children. I think that starts with our individual citizens um, giving their time, giving their resources to help. I think it starts with our legislator focusing on our kids in care. That's really an issue. We can change their lives if we focus on them now while they're in the system and we help them. Uh, otherwise, you know, it, it becomes a burden on our entire society. So we really do do a disservice to these children if we don't shine a light on them now and really focus on helping them. In addition to shining a light, what can we do to help these children? Everybody can help. You can give of your time. I mean, many of these foster children just want someone showing up at their Friday night football game. You can give of your resources. Uh, many of these kids need a second pair of eyeglasses. So there's a number of ways you can help. And of course, you can become a foster parent, which is the best thing you can do. Can I just say that I think you're a superwoman? <laughs> <laughs> you really well, are. I'm humbled by someone like you saying that. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And thank you for all the work that you do in this community and for the children in this community. It means a lot. And you've really made an impact in this community and in the world. Thank you so much. Appreciate you paying attention to the issues.